What's going on? Brian Tong here for everything good and bad inside Apple. The iPhone rumors keep on coming with the latest from Mac rumors that claims the new iPhone 7 will look very similar to the iPhone 6 and 6S. Wow, what a surprise. But the rear camera will now be flush with the rear casing thanks to a thinner camera module like this render. The report also says Apple will remove the rear antenna bands on the phone, allowing for a cleaner all-metal look, while the antenna bands on the side and the top will remain. Um, hopefully it doesn't look like that render. Now we also talked about the iPhone's rumored dual lens camera last week, but Sony's CFO recently added a little fuel to the fire during their earnings report, saying that its dual lens camera platform will be featured in smartphones from major players in 2016. Sony's camera tech is already used by smartphone makers such as, ding, 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 Apple. Now Sony also believes 2017 will be the year the dual lens camera platform really takes off due to the current slowdown in high-end phone sales, which impacts demand and production. Digitimes reports that Largan Technology and Japan and China-based camera lens makers have sent dual lens camera samples for Apple to test for the potential inclusion in its next iPhone. Largan currently supplies Apple with 60% of their smartphone cameras. So you might be just happy with the camera you own right now, but want something else from your phone? Well, according to Bloomberg, the Big A is developing extended range wireless charging for the iPhone with the hopes to bring it to market as soon as 2017. The goal is to have a range that goes beyond just using a charging mat, and they're trying to overcome the loss of power over longer distances. A 2010 Apple patent application revealed a concept with an iMac as the central hub for charging devices at a distance of one meter away using a technique called near field magnetic resonance. Another Apple patent application featured aluminum phone casings that allow radio waves to pass through them and would help minimize interference with things like a phone signal. All of this sounds nice, but I'm still just waiting for an iPhone with significantly better battery life. I think you are too. All right, 9to5Mac reports Apple is now eyeballing Tuesday, March the 15th for the unveiling of the iPad Air 3, iPhone 5SE, and new Apple Watch bands. That date is still subject to change, but what probably isn't? The rumor design for the iPad Air 3. A new drawing of the unannounced iPad Air 3 on Engadget points to design that will fall in line with rumors, including quad speakers like the iPad Pro, a smart connector on its side for accessories like a smart keyboard, and an extra hole below the camera for all of you budding tablet photographers. Pretty much only moms and dads based on what I've seen in public. Now, the drawing shows the new iPad will be 0.05 millimeters thinner and 0.1 millimeters wider than the previous iPad Air and is rumored to also bring Apple Pencil support, which I've only used for adult coloring books recently. And no, it's not what you perverts are thinking. They actually look more like this. <laughs> hey guys, see? I just need to finish the periwinkle highlights. But still, more depressing. Chinese website Alibaba is already producing iPad cases based on these designs all but confirming that it's time that I once and for all accept. The iPad camera revolution is here to stay. And that's a bad Apple. Ah! All right, the iPhone 5SE still looks like the name Apple will be using. It's going to be part of March's event, and I came up with a few names for it last week, like I really do like the iPhone Cinco SE. But I figured to ask you, the Apple biters on Twitter, what you think the SE in the iPhone 5SE could stand for. Muhaiman went with the iPhone 5, same edition. Nick Sung called it superiorly excellent. Fanboy alert. Siobhan Urbina said, shut up and take everything I own, capitalizing just the S and E, so that doesn't count. Andrzej Kozak gets classy with the <laughs> edition. Josh Holm thinks it stands for scam everyone, and Curtis Barton called it the iPhone 5 sexual emoji. Curtis, I'm pretty sure that's it. All right, that's going to do it for this week. You can email us at theapplebite at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you all next time for another bite of the apple.